Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. Today we've got a special guest from Radar Relay and that's the CEO, Alan. How are you going, mate? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. No worries. So we stumbled upon your decentralized exchange a while back and I, I love the interface. I'll just bring it up quickly for, for um, people to have a look at. Um, we did the tutorial. You can plug in. It's different to other decentralized exchanges and I'll let you talk about that. And you recently also raised $10 million to further the development and that's not for an ICO or a token or anything. That's just to develop the project, which is fantastic to see. So What's your story? How did you get into crypto and into a, building a decentralized exchange? Yeah, yeah. Well, again, uh, thanks for having me. And, and thanks so much for that tutorial. For, for those in the audience listening, if you haven't caught that tutorial, it was excellent. It went absolutely viral in our Slack um, when, when that dropped. And, and it was, I think, an inflection point for us where we realized that other people on the other side of the world um, care deeply about what we're building and just, just thank you for to you and, and the community for, for getting that out there. My pleasure. Uh, and then in terms of, of, of my story, it's certainly not as exciting as, as where Radar is headed, but briefly, um, I'm an operator, I'm not an engineer, and I'm not a finance guy. Um, like many of you out there, I, I approach this space with, with a beginner's mind. When I landed in crypto a few years ago, I was trying to understand how everything worked. I couldn't wrap my head around, why were there no soft landings? Meaning, why were there no clear onboarding rails, onboarding infrastructure to get started? And why the heck weren't wasn't the trading experience peer to peer? I thought this all, all this tech was supposed to be from person to person. Why why are we using these other software companies and centralized exchanges? And that's where Radar was born. It was actually born here in my basement, where where, where we're doing this interview uh, back in um, the summer of 2017, a few crypto years ago. Um, and, and back then, there was just a few of us guys here in Colorado, where the company is headquartered. Flash forward. Um, almost a year, almost a year later now, there's about 30 of us, mostly here in Colorado. We've done two traditional financing rounds, a seed round in November, $3 million. And then, as you mentioned, uh, just wrapped up a, a series A of, of $10 million. Awesome. Now, um, I think your questions around what the heck is a decentralized exchange? What is a relayer? Um, just, I'll just hit the, those real quick. And then I think some of the other questions will make more sense. Um, so when we think about our business, when we think about radar, Think of it as a, like a holding company or a parent company that's going to continuously spin out new products. So the, the vision of the company is around agency and self-efficacy. The mission of the company is around onboarding, like I mentioned, right? How do we move people into this technology? But the strategy or the how, that's dependent on products. Our first product, Radar Relay, is the first of a category called Relayers. And that's what I talked about earlier with the peer-to-peer, -peer, or in this case, wallet-to-wallet -wallet trading. Yep. Now, to avoid all the technical jargon, just think of this this product. It's like Craigslist, um, or you know, if, if you're if you're international, um, any sort of interface uh, marketplace you would use to buy and sell your couch. Um, just on Craigslist, right? You go and you buy and sell your couch, and you might meet in some parking lot or Starbucks somewhere. Yeah. Whereas on Radar, you're buying and selling tokens, but you're meeting directly on the Ethereum blockchain. So um, I'll, I'll pause my rant there just for a minute as a fire hydrant of info, but I think we covered some of your questions. Yeah, I think that um, explanation I try to tell people is that you sort of give the exchange access to say, yes, I want to sell some tokens at this price and they don't leave your device until that order is matched, I guess is a nice, safe, secure way to think about it. Yeah, well, well said. And, and it's worthwhile to, to think about the continuum of exchange technology or the evolution of exchange technology. Um, for somebody like you, you've been in the Bitcoin space for, I think you said since, since sort of day one, um, you've seen you've seen the evolution of exchange, you've seen them come and go. And in the earliest days, in the earliest implementations, they were very fragile, um, right? It was uh, a few guys that, that launched something like Mt. Gox and they tried to create a safe sandbox where they could set the rules and adjudicate transactions. And that security model, that very first security model, it's still around today. That's why we see all these hacks and, and uh, a lot of bad actors targeting these exchanges. Because what you're doing as a user is you're taking your custody of your funds and you're giving it to the exchange. You give it to them in exchange for, for faster trades. Um, but of course, there's some operational risk. Yeah. So wicked smart entrepreneurs noticed this, that there was a, this, these tragic hacks were happening, and they decided to, to innovate. They started A-B testing all different ideas. And so you saw the advent of smart contract-based decentralized exchanges, which, which I know has uh, been a topic of conversation um, in your community. Absolutely. That was like, that was like Ether Delta. 
Yeah. And if you've used these before, you know that it's a huge improvement in terms of reducing the operational risk. But man, is it slow and is it tough to use? And you're still depositing into somebody else's smart contract. You, you're, you can't put your your custom, you can't put your tokens under your pillow at night. You, yeah. they're, they're in some other contract. Can be very slow and clunky if you're new to this space as well. So how do you guys, um, um, volume's obviously increasing on all these decentralized exchanges. So how do you guys decide um, well, what you're gonna list or how does that all look behind the scenes and how do you start to relay with other people working, um, well, with 0x really, I guess? Sure, yeah, so let's dive in. So maybe, um, be a good segue there is so we talked about centralized exchanges we talked about um, smart contract based decentralized exchanges and then there's this new category that, that we're trying to bring to fruition the relayer um, and i think when you when you create a new category like we have um, you have a lot of uphill battles there's a lot of hurdles right one is around education one is around new user actions you have to create a vocabulary to even talk about the problem right things like networks liquidity you might have heard or modular trade network or some of the jargon around our, our company but ultimately when you do that when you set when you set the tone when you when you create the vocabulary you own the solution so we're we're, we're still in the um, education component right we're, we're certainly not feeling that we've owned the solution yet but to your point how does it work so um, just like the smart contract based exchanges leveraged ethereum and the innovation around the escrow service or smart contract our category leverages the zero X protocol. And, and I know you guys have done um, deep dives on zero X and maybe this is a plug to, to catch one of your, your videos, but <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it, think, think of the zero X protocol is, is uh, two different systems or two different things happening. The first is messaging. So you show up, you indicate your order parameters. So you're, how much token, how many tokens do I want to buy? How long um, do I want them to, what was the expiry period? Um, how many do I want to buy? And those, those order schema, those order parameters are signed cryptographically in a packet that's sent to the relayer. And we store that um, off-chain, right? We store that in a database. And then the second part of 0x is the pipes. It's how those, it's how those packets move. And right now, in, in version one of those pipes of 0x, it's a few smart contracts that are used. As the 0x protocol grows, as more and more relayers and dApps and peers and, and traders and uh, automated traders start to use this standardized and interoperable protocol, we're gonna to need to replace those pipes, right? Those pipes are gonna get rusty. Um, we're gonna find better gas optimization strategies. Um, we're, we're going to, to need to include um, batch cancellations. There's, there's a lot of opportunities to improve. So you might ask, how does a large group of biased participants agree to take out the rusty pipe and put in a new PVC pipe? Well, that's, that's where the token comes in. And that's the exciting innovation on governance. And, and when you hold the ZRX token, right, it's, it's a tying a bow around the whole protocol. And now you get, a, you get a stake, you get a vote in how this protocol improves. So um, how does that, what does that mean for us? Um, as a user right now on Radar, you don't need to worry about all that technical stuff. You just show up, you trade directly from your wallet, you place an order, you take an order, you trade directly with another peer. And under the hood, we use a ZRX protocol to abstract all that stuff away and make sure that you don't face any of that operational risk. Yeah. In the early stages, um, 0x was talking about everyone using that protocol will have to pay fees in 0x and some have kind of maybe moved away from that in the early stages. But other than governance, do you still see a big use case and demand for 0x going forward as we have more and more of these decentralized exchanges? Yeah, so, um, you know, I'll, I'll share something I don't I don't usually talk about on interviews and podcasts and um that's that before we met the 0x team, before we were deciding to build in the protocol, we were actually thinking about um, building something similar. And, and then we met them and realized opportunity costs, uh, sort of divide and conquer. But when, when we were thinking of this implementation, we were thinking of the same thing, of having a, both a fee token and a governance token. That's why we fell in love with the model right away. But as we, as we went out and we talked to customers, right, we got out of the building, we left my basement, we talked to users, we understood that while the governance token is critically important, in the early days, well, while zero X is not widely while the token isn't widely distributed, when there's not a clear governance mechanism set up, we should just abstract that away from the user. So we've turned on zero fees. Many other relayers um, have done have done um, similar strategies, and and then as we look to turn on the use the token, we're still going to abstract that away for the user, and and we believe in the crypto economic incentives around the token. We believe deeply that there's an alignment from 
um, from like a game theory perspective, but we don't believe that users need to hold that to, to ride this ride. And so there's actually a compromise here in the middle. You know, I think a lot of people talk about zero X as binary or valuable, not valuable. I think, I think that's um, it's a false dichotomy and um, it's going to depend on how the ecosystem continues to evolve. If it stays as vibrant as it has, the, the token is absolutely going to maintain value because we need to use it um, as, as a relayer project. Yeah, fantastic. That's a great answer as well. Now you've raised that money. What's the what's next for you guys? What do you want to develop? Um, and obviously, people always want to get their token added onto all these exchanges. So, what's the sort of yeah. criteria you use? Yeah, you actually you asked that, and I, and I skipped right over it. So um, you're right. So we we get a lot of um, a lot of inbound. So you know, if, if you actually look at our our signups inbound, we're, we're getting I don't know a, a few dozen a day, or maybe a few do- a few dozen per week now at this point. And so if you think of that as the denominator on the, the numerator, right? So the top part of the fraction, that's 172. That's how many tokens we have today. And so we, we are very selective. It's not a, um, uh, it's, it's not a sort of come on, come all, you're, you're on board at Radar. We actually have a full-time employee. Um, his name is Gareth. He's our director of token analysis. And he's, he sits as the gatekeeper managing those inbounds, making sure that when a token knocks on our door, we take them through a compliance process, right? And happy to share that compliance process with any tokens, uh, any token issuers that might be listening in and, and want to be listed. But we're really focused on supporting utility tokens. We, we spend a lot of time understanding um, your legal strategy. We typically work with either your attorneys or, or uh, you, you deliver a legal memo to us. We make sure that uh, when you show up at Radar, it's, um, you're, you're fully aware of, of the um, strategies we have around supporting utility tokens, not being to uh, security as per Brightline security tests, like the Howey test here in the U.S. Um, so very, very sort of structured process. I will mention it is free. We do not charge. Like many exchanges out there, um, well, I'll, I'll be diplomatic here, but I will say that there are people that are engaging in some pretty serious price gouging upwards of a few million dollars per listing just for us ludicrous right if, if our goal is widespread global distribution of these tokens and if our goal is to onboard the world to the token economy what the hell people millions of for access so um anyways that's that's the piece on uh, the listing requirements now in terms of uh, fundraising you asked that was the second part of the question we raised the the three million dollars in november that was after we had launched our product, right? So, so we launched in October and we were growing a, sort of, uh, we were almost on the, the bottom edge of the, of the hockey stick there. We raised the round so we could hire more folks. We could hire more engineers, could ascertain the sort of the legal nuances that we needed to. And as we've been growing through our beta, we've traded over $150 million in volume from users in over 150 countries, um, which is this is just humbling and scary and um, and and rewarding. And so um, it's time it's time to to really hundred x right. We figured out the blocking and tackling, the compliance, the operations. So so we look to do a, a growth equity round. And so we raised a um, and I say that growth equity. Um, it's very uh, it, it's not not quite growth equity, right? But it's a, um, a ser- traditional Series A financing round um, to to put the to pour some fuel on on the fire here and focus on international expansion. So right now, less than a third of our users are in the, are here in the U.S. And when we get a support question in Turkish, or we we get a question from from somebody in Africa, we're we're not quite sure even how to translate that and some, how to answer that. So a big part of this financing is going to go to establish those operations to support global expansion, and then um, another big piece of that capital is going to be focused on new products. Um, how do we support things like security tokens? How do we support things like collectibles? So um, there you go, and the compliance uh, listing and the financing. Man, that's um, another fascinating um, answer there. With you've given people lots to think about, and I'm looking forward to seeing this unfold um, as well. So, any final thoughts you want to share with people about the space in general, where you think we are at the moment? Um, we certainly talk about all those things you mentioned. Too much to get listed on exchanges. People speculating, and now it's died down, and we see people that are interested in the tech that will be watching this interview that is kind of um, still here. So it's the healthy cycle that I've seen play out over and over again. And I think that's oh, I've never been more excited about the future, especially after we hear these sort of interviews. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. So two two things. Um, first and foremost, really want to make it clear that. Um, 
in these new categories, right? So we have centralized smart contract based and then this category of, there are many participants. Um, there are some that are focused on the, you know, the jurisdiction nearest you, right? If whether you're in China, um, Australia, Africa, there, there's probably a participant, probably a venue um, that's right for you. And I would really encourage you to go out there and explore. There are really exciting projects like Kyber uh, and AirSwap and um, ERC Dex and, and um, just go go check them out, right? Don't don't just say, hey, this guy is talking about radar. I'm only going to use that one. Um, but go explore. And then second is is a is a plug, which is user feedback. Um, the only way that we've been able to you know accomplish some of these ambitious goals and grow so quickly is because we are a direct reflection of of user engagement. And I can't tell you how many times we've we've been stuck on some sort of technical problem or UI problem. And we realize, well, this is why we have a user advisory board, and this is why we have beta beta users. And we get them online, we get them on Skype, and they walk us through um, what would it look like if it was easy. And, and it's one of those moments where um, you know we're so thankful. And so I would ask any of the new listeners here, um, you know, come make a trade on Radar and tell us what we can do better, um, and and how we can support your jurisdiction, and how we make it less friction, and which tokens, which books do you need to be liquid. So in order to do that, follow us on Twitter, Medium newsletter and then we're very active in telegram you can, you can find me there as well awesome i appreciate you joining us um alan and i really hope we catch up again in the future mate thank you yeah vice versa thanks so much guys cheers